Hello and welcome to The Rest is Football with me, Gary Lineker, Alan Shearer and Micah Richards. Micah, you look like you're at home with your array of kind of trophies <laughs> behind you. Um, who's on with you tonight, Alan? Uh, Mark Chapman presenting and Leon Osman. Yeah. What's it like being in the reserves again? <laughs> 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 I thought I'd leave you first team as to it last night. Micah, you weren't on. You had a weekend yeah. off, Micah. No, I was doing the uh, the live game. Ah, okay. Man City, Chelsea. You were very good. I, I tell you, what, I really like Daniel Sturridge, actually. He's good, isn't he? He's good, yeah. And he speaks from a striker's point of view, not just mm. the defensive. That's why I like him, obviously. <laughs> yeah. But I, no, I thought he was really good. And he's a lot of fun as well, isn't he? Oh, he's got personality. We're going yeah. to get him on the pod. Now that he's back and settled, we'll get him on. Right, where's he been? Yeah, well, he was ill. Then he went to uh, Seychelles for a couple ooh, of weeks. Nice. And then n- now he's back. How the other half live. <laughs> um, Seychelles to Salford, Alan. Just a bit different um, there, right? <laughs> but a couple of interesting games to talk about. Let's start with Manchester United. I want to start with, with Hoyland. Um, he's supposed to become the, fir- the youngest player in Premier League history to score in six successive games. Yep. He's really bounced back, and that speaks volumes for him because it, it, it was a struggle for him, particularly in the Premier League. He scored goals, obviously, in the Champions League. Um, but they stuck with him, or kind of forced to stuck with him in many yeah. ways because there weren't too many alternatives. But he really... I like him. He's quick. Um, he can finish... And I think uh, Manchester United have, have, have got a good one. Yeah, I, I think in fairness to us both, uh, throughout the season, I don't think we've changed our mind or wavered at any ch- any stage and said, we do think there's a player in there. Um, even when it, it looked as if he was really struggling. And we, we all said, didn't we, that we probably thought it was a bit unfair on him having to be mm. in the position that he's, he's in at the minute, having to play every game because of injuries or whatever, they didn't have anyone else. Um, but I think, you know what, he showed great character. He really has. He's never stopped. Um, his attitude was, has been superb. Yeah. And now he's getting his rewards for that. Um, six games on the spin. I thought he was brilliant today. I thought his hold-up play, apart from his two goals, I mean, his second one is a really clever finish. Really clever. But Oh, uh, wasn't it just? Yeah, it was brilliant. I mean, it was. It, there was no fluke about that at all. He knew exactly what he was doing, where he was, what he had to do. But take away his two goals, I thought every other part of his game I thought was excellent today. He led the line well. He worked his socks off. He brought people into the game because Luton basically went man for man at times. Um, but, yeah, I, um, I'm i really pleased for him because he has been under the cosh a lot of times this season. He's now getting his goals to to keep him going. It'll be, it'll be loving the game right now. Of course, we know what it's like when you're not scoring. It's horrible, isn't it? It's Everyone's saying negative things about you. People are bringing the price tag up. But, yeah, he'll, he'll be How loving football. How would you know? <laughs> <laughs> he'll be loving his football now. Can I just ask you two as strikers, what has been the difference in terms of him now? Because before, why we had faith in him is because he was getting into the right areas. Mm-hmm. But now he's putting them chances away. So what is the difference between before and now? Probably probably getting a goal or two and then a bit of confidence. Mm-hmm. Um, but can you I explain, th- sorry, when you say confidence, yeah. guys, can you explain for a striker what that means? Because every time when mm. I speak to football fans and they said, but why does it have to take a goal for you to get confidence? So could you explain what that means? Yeah, it's, it, it's a very strange thing. And if there was a magical formula um, that we all knew, then we'd, we'd, we'd score every single game. But football is... Is on. I mean, take for example his second goal today. Whilst obviously it was an incre- incredibly quick reaction and a bit of skill on his chest, that I mean that could have gone anywhere. There's no doubt about that. But it went in the far corner. When things are not quite happening for you, it hits the post. It goes wide. It's you in the face rather than the chest. Um, so th- things like that. Um, it, it's it's bizarre. I've, I've thought about it so many times in my career. I don't know. But the truth is. Um, you will get your rewards and the people that tend to score consistently are the ones that are not afraid to miss. We've talked about this before and you could you could take, for example, Haaland yesterday. 
Um, he had lots of chances. It wasn't his day. He had a bit of a shocker. But does that mean he didn't want to still get in there? No. Whereas some strikers, you can see the conf... This is what I'm talking about with confidence. With some strikers, they'll stop perhaps wanting to get in there or they even if it's a kind of subconscious thing not to to like you might stand behind a defender because you've got a, a slight fear of missing those players I would suggest are not ones that rise really to the top that wouldn't have happened to Alan and it didn't happen to me and the the ones that do have really good high goal scoring ratios uh, are the ones that keep getting in there when it comes to confidence well I, it's, it's a strange thing. I think it's in all sport, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, it's momentum. It's it's when things are going well, everything's well with the world, and it's things feeling go for good you. as yeah. well. Feeling yeah. good, isn't it? Feeling feeling important and feeling I don't know red hot. It's and also I think what will help them is that maybe a, a more settled side at Manchester United. And I know there's always pressure on you when you play football, and there's always pressure on you at, at Manchester United. But when you're winning games and when you've got a little bit of a settled side big and bigger players back, I mean, uh, Rashford back and uh, Ganocchi on the uh, on the right-hand side and Casemiro's back, Varane's back. Um, so when you... Maynard's when you, been brilliant. Yeah, when you put all those things together, then just the little things make the difference. And that it's there's no doubt belief and confidence. In it's worth mentioning too, and it was... I, I particularly remember one match of the day when you did it, Alan, that you raised... Um, the, the discussion around the amount of chances created by the two wide players from Manchester United yeah. that were next to nothing, yeah. uh, pretty pretty much nothing at all. Um, so therefore, they're creating more. And if you create more and you keep getting in there, eventually the goals will come. And then once once one or two go back in the back of the net, um, it's 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 right. It's 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 between the ears, and um, which is always a cue for an Allen. Joe, <laughs> <laughs> not, I'm not saying a word, Gaz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but it's good to see. But I, I, I mentioned Maynu in there. I, 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 I really morning. like him. I saw it. I saw him right um, tweeted tonight that he said he has to be called up um, in the England squad, and it is a position where you know that there, there, there are, you know you would say there's a space there, wouldn't you? Perhaps alongside um, Declan Rice, unless he he might play a. Trent Alexander Arnold in there. Um, he's always he's like Calvin Phillips, but you know obviously he's had his difficulties and he's struggling at West Ham. Um, the other alternative is obviously Jordan Henderson. He went to watch him at Ajax, but you know he's been to Saudi now. Now he's playing in a you know obviously not as anything like as strong a league as as the Premier League. And and this young man, I mean, he, he, every time I see him, I think he's so impressive, so mature in his performances. It's just his, like, his composure. You know when in the game today, when the game was getting a little bit frantic, he was the only one really able to get his foot on the ball and still be calm in mm -hmm. possession. In regards to England, it's always a tough one, isn't he? On ability, I would 100% take him. Yeah. But if, I you're, just if, if you're good enough, you're old enough. Yes, definitely. And because he's dealt with the whole pressure of playing for Man United and fitting in. And do you remember a couple of games back, he actually made a mistake that led to a goal, but he bounced back from that. It didn't affect him. So you see his true character there. The only thing is, though, if we rush him too soon, is it going to spoil him? Is that going to be too much pressure? I was listening to... um. Uh, something interview with Jose Mourinho and he was saying what's special about Jude is he had his football away from sort of the English media hype and he was able to go about his business without having that much pressure and I just worried that if he was to go and play and start and do well are we going to put too much pressure on him but I do agree with you in that position at this moment, apart from Rice, there's nobody probably playing better. So it is a little bit of a, a conundrum. The pressure that goes with playing for such a huge football club um, and the way he's just come in and, I mean, it, it, he's just handled it so easily, hasn't he? Which has to be a great positive to go against what Mike is saying, you know, in terms of the pressure and England and all of that. Um, but he, he has to be in you his can, You uh, can thoughts. either handle the pressure or you can't, can't you? 
I mean, you're either that kind of player. You find that out at 18, 19, 20, 20 whatever it is. International's no. different though, isn't it, Gaz? I mean, that international stage. Yeah, but imagine how much you could learn when you go away with this back. I'm not saying he's going to be in the starting lineup, but in, in terms of that kind of... What would you sooner have as a player that might not play many games? A Calvin Phillips or a um, Jordan Henderson or a youngster like Maynou that will learn off Bellingham and Rice and Madison and all these, yeah. and Trent Alexander-Arnold. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. It obviously, you know, we always argue and debate about who should be in an England squad and who shouldn't. And obviously that's why, that's one of the reasons that makes the um, England manager's job so so <laughs> difficult. But it doesn't know felt when you've got good players to choose from rather than mediocre Correct. players. And he is yeah. a very, very good player. It's at a, at a, at a young age. And yeah, um, I think it's great that we're talking about it um, I can only. I, I think that'll do him the world of good as well because it'll, that'll give him, if he needs any, huge belief and confidence as well to to feel as if he belongs there. Yeah, I'm just looking at you there, Alan, and, and obviously I know you're in one of the dressing rooms because I've been in many of them over many years, many, many, many years. You could have shut the loo door behind you. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope there's no one in there. Yeah, there's no one in there, no. <laughs> yeah, <it's... laughs> uh, that's five wins in a row for Manchester United. They're now just three points behind Spurs. They're making a little bit of a run after what looked like it might be a disastrous season. I know. It's... Um... I mean, I don't know. I still... Yeah, they're on a, they're on a good run. They look better. Um results seems as if he's got everyone sort of back to I don't know all on the same page if you like um I don't know for me though I'm still not I'm still not I don't know I don't know what to expect from them I don't know what's going to happen from in 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 the next game I mean they were they were pushed all the way today they were gifted a goal in the first minute uh but they went out and they won the game we've seen City struggle there, Liverpool struggle there, Arsenal struggle at uh, at Luton. So it was always going to be a, a, a really tough game. Newcastle got done there. Um so I think that was a great win for them. Um but I still I'm not I'm still not 100% certain about them. Are you Mike? I don't know. Yeah, there's just something I I don't know because every time we say Man United look like <laughs> they're back, yeah. they let you down, don't they? So it's just sort of if they can do it consistently for another five games, and we're not talking about all wins, but getting they've got the Manchester derby in, in a couple of weeks. That's going to be the, the real test for them to see exactly where they are. If they was to, to win that or get a point out of that and do okay in the other fixtures, then yes, we'll talk about them more glowing with it. But I agree with Alan. The, the I wouldn't say they're missing something, but I, sometimes they just give you something and then they take it away. So I don't want to get too excited just yet. You wouldn't get excited anyway if they're doing well, you fucking liar. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's, there is no bias on this. this I think it would be remiss of us not to, to mention um, Luton. They went down two down early and I thought they had a real go after that. Yeah. I thought Barkley again was... was um, um, really good again you know he's, they've got something there and of the, certainly of the three promoted clubs um they've been by some distance i think the best i, I would say um because it was a little bit of a laughing stock at the start of the season weren't we nobody gave him a chance mm. we was trying to figure out how they're going to play then we did some on match of the day and it was really good with with doughty and ogbeni i think they miss adebayo today mm. up front he got mm. Injured in the warm up. I Micah, think... was he in your fantasy team? <laughs> no, I, no. You took him out? Uh, no, I, you know what? Uh, I had to do a few changes. Don't ask me about fantasy guys, man. <laughs> You've had a bad you weekend. Just, you just absolutely killed my mood, you have. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mike. Harlem should have scored a hat trick. I used my triple captain. Well, everyone triple captained him, didn't they? <laughs> I, I, I saw so. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not really clued in on this, except for the fact that my kids are obsessed by it. And as are you, as is the editor of Match of the Day, and as is Jermaine Genus. <laughs> and um, I, I saw something on the BBC Sport um, um, Twitter feed yesterday that said... Um, he was the most triple captain player in the history of fantasy football yesterday <laughs> with something like over one and a half million people. So he has made one and a half million people miserable <laughs> by his performance. But 
It's a double. It's a double game week. It, that's why they triple captained him. I see. I'm not a fool. I know this business <laughs> mainly because I hear it twenty four seven. What's this shit you two are on about? Uh, 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 we we preferred we preferred the real football. Uh, I think I think I think we'd have been triple captained a few times in our career if it was around in our day. Yeah, you would have. I think it means you get three times the points, Alan. Exactly if you, if you that. Didn't know. Yeah. If, and you, is it right in, in the entirety of one season you get one go at a triple captain? Yes, you get one go at a triple. You see, you, you know, you know how it goes. I, well, God, blimey, I hear it all the time. <laughs> of course, I know how it goes. Sheffield United. I mean, uh, uh, I mean oh. today. I mean, I, yes, well done, Brighton. But I mean, the the, the sending off was a, a, a moment of madness. I, I think honestly, he just honestly. tried to kick the ball hard and he followed through it, but he missed the ball completely, and there was Do no you? choice really for the. Yeah, I don't think he went to do him. I, I think Whoa. it doesn't make any sense. I just think he genuinely... And you know what slow motion's like, but if you see it from a distance in normal speed, I think he just went to kick the ball, completely missed it, with a bit of aggression. But I don't think he, I don't think he deliberately went and booted him, even though it looks like that a little bit. I, do, I don't think so. Before, before you go, Al, because you're, you're not impressed at all, I agree with, with Gary to a certain extent. It's one of those where... The ball's rolling slow as a defender and you think, this is my chance to get ball and man. So yeah. you get the ball and you go through the man as well and you kick him up in the air. But what he's done, he's only touched a little bit of the ball and his leg's still gone up and it's caught him in the top of his leg. In the end, it looked, there's an angle that looked absolutely disgusting. Is, yeah. But I genuinely think that he's gone for the ball first, but he's mistimed it and he's, he's gone and it's hit him in the leg. Yeah. Oh, I That's a snowflake terrible, footballer, terrible, Alan. You, you... <laughs> terrible. I thought it was an awful challenge. I thought it was one of those where, and I might be wrong, where he thinks this is a free hit. I can take the ball and the money. Mm. And um, well, well, it was a the, shocking well, take, challenge. Yeah, but, it was a shocking challenge. The trouble is he missed the ball. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah. You know it what, was a it's, a, it's a manager and as a team, you plan all week, right? You're working all week. This is what we're going to do. And then after, uh, what, how, how long was it? I don't know, four or five minutes of the game, whatever it was. Then you're getting one of your players sent off for such a crazy challenge like that. I mean, it must drive you absolutely bonkers. And uh, I mean, the way... They were in for a tough afternoon anyway with Brighton and the rest of the... I mean, I would have gone in and said, what the earth are you playing at, man, at half-time? Seriously, because you were up against it anyway against a very good Brighton team. We're not going to have a lot of the ball in terms of Sheffield United. It's, 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 you've just made it impossible for us with a stupid challenge, crazy challenge, out of control, and you just killed us for, is it, for, for, a, for another weekend. Um, so no, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not having it. Was I thought it was a nasty challenge as well. When you've already conceded ten goals in your previous two home games, and then that, that happens, so that's fifteen goals have conceded in the last three home games. I know they won at Luton in the um, between those matches, but um, I mean it's it's going to be incredibly difficult f for them to stay up. It's, it's, it is going to be difficult. And I, I think there's a, a stat on Sky to say if they keep conceding at this rate, they're going to concede over 100 goals. Wow. I think they're at 65, something like that. They're going to concede over 100. And it, it's, so, it's so tough, isn't it? Because I've been in them situations where confidence is, is shot. We mentioned about the, the confidence for the strikers and... What you want to do as a defender, you want to make that first challenge, get the crowd behind you, but it just, it, it killed the game. Um, no team has ever conceded as many goals as, at this stage as, as Sheffield United. Um, I want to, on the more positive note, if you're looking at Brighton, um, a Dingra, so I'm in a Dingra. Um, I mean... We, funny enough, I don't take too much credit for this because actually I was, it's more of a tip from um, producer Harry alongside me at the, when we did the kind of roundup of where we t thought teams would finish, um, we mentioned the Dingra as an exciting young talent. And um, what, a, what a week or so he's had winning the, you know, winning the Africa Cup of Nations, um, assisting both goals. 
and coming back and then banging in a couple more today. So, I mean, they, they absolutely battered Sheffield Best United. young player Best of the young, tournament, right, Alan. Okay, yeah, right, Best young was, player yeah. of the tournament. Yeah, I mean, they, him, him, and, uh, him and Matoma down either side, left and right, they absolutely battered Sheffield United. I mean, they tied them in yeah. knots, those two, didn't they? They didn't have a clue what way they were going to go and they got, they got battered down either side. Uh, by the time this comes out, Alan, we, we, people will have seen um, your analysis. If, if, if unlike me, they can stay up that late on a Sunday <laughs> night, um, <laughs> I watch it. I watch it on catch up as I usually do on a Monday morning. But um, what's your analysis? It's that. It's the two how uh, Adingra and uh, Matoma um, just were relentless and went past them. Crosses into the box. So many crosses that it was. It was. Uh, I was sat there thinking it must be great to play in this Brighton team. The number of balls that they're putting, quality balls into the uh, into the box and obviously we're also having a look at the uh, at the red card. Uh, Alan, how good is Pascal Gross? Yeah, very good. Hon- honest to he, Is he one he, of the he, most underrated players in the Premier League? It's ridiculous. He, he gets an assist, he sets up an attack, he always passes forward, he chops 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 and finds a way to get that little yard of space and then I just think he's unbelievable. He can play wing back. He can play midfield. He can play attacking and holding. He can play. He can play anywhere. What a player he is! It begs the question, really, Mike. Is he in your fantasy team? No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> I had him in last year, but yeah. I had Matoma in earlier on, and he got injured. But no, Pascal Gross. I've, yeah, my my, my man feels too good to be honest. He's just outside. It's it's really tight in that little pack, isn't it? Um, um, because Brighton are up to seventh, three points separate Brighton, Newcastle, West Ham, Chelsea, and Wolves. Tight, isn't it? Yeah, it's really tight in that that particular area of the table. Top five all played on on Saturday, um, and the big game was always looked like being Manchester City and, and Chelsea. I thought Chelsea played pretty well. Um, particularly in the first half. Um, in the second 45 minutes, they they sat back. Uh, you were at the game, Micah. Um, sometimes it's different. You get a different perception of things when you're at the game rather than uh, watching it on, on television. So um, what did you think? I thought Chelsea were absolutely outstanding. Uh, that's the best I've seen them all season. Remember at the start of the season where I, I said there was showing signs of, of a good mm. team and the patterns of play. They get to the final third and they wouldn't put it away. It was similar in, in this game. So it was strange because Man City went without a Bernardo Silva and Alvarez was sort of playing a little bit deeper mm. when they was uh, I'm building I'm not sure up it from... suited him, Micah. It didn't. It, well, yeah. you know, it, I, I said that yesterday or on Saturday on, uh, on, on, on Sky. I just think... On transition, Chelsea played brilliant. They sort of let Man City have the ball, soaked up the pressure, then it was like one or two passes. Jackson went on the left and then went up front. He was the best game in a, in a Chelsea shirt. Um, Raheem Sterling runs in behind and Man City just couldn't deal with it. If Chelsea was a little bit more clinical, they could have scored two or three goals. I was really surprised with Man City. Everything was a little bit... Slow, took they're too ju- many they're chances. They're doing off day though, aren't they? I mean, they're <laughs> yeah, so yeah but, but not brilliant. just because they had, I think in the game, 71% possession. So they're always going to return, retain the ball. But just in terms of that cuteness around the box, Haaland had probably three very good chances. He had an off day for by his standards. But yeah, it, I think watching the game and analysing it and looking at the tactics of it. I thought Gusto for Chelsea as well was brilliant. Two centre-offs as well, Micah, Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. I thought especially De Zazi. Mm. De Zazi was fantastic. Really good clearances. Mm. His position, uh, positioning was really good on certain uh, occasions in the game. But it was weird because around the 70th minute, they went to a five at the back. And that sort of played a little bit into City's hands where they tried to shut up shop and then that's where the Rodri goal came from. Pochettino, I think, is getting something there. And you've got to look at Chelsea, a very young side. So I think they can grow. There's no question about that. 
I was very, very surprised when he took Cole Palmer off because they were at a stage where they were struggling to get out and he was the one player that could keep the ball at that particular point and, you know, keep them in the game. And then he took him off, brought a defender on and they were kind of even deeper, weren't they? And it, it was kind of eventuality that would score and they could have actually pinched it in the end, Manchester City, but obviously Haaland had an off day. Yeah, it's just subconsciously, isn't it? It's like when you're, when you're trying to hold on to something, you think, okay, let's drop back. Let's go in a low block mm. and try and defend. On Saturday, I just believed that they had the indecency in the game to get it to the players who could look after the ball and then hit Man City on their counter-attack and it worked against them in the end. But I thought overall, Chelsea deserve a lot of praise. Yeah, a few signs that um, Erling Haaland may well be human <laughs> after all. Um, um, he struggles a little bit. I mean, despite his stature and his height, he struggles a little bit with his, his technique heading. He's got that slight habit that I've seen a lot of players have that when the ball comes over, that I think as just before they head it, sometimes there's a tendency to, to shut your eyes. Now, I think we all do that, but what I think the important thing is you've got to keep your eyes right on the ball to the end because automatically, if you close your eyes slightly, your head just dips a fraction and the and then you lose control of the ball and it can go high. Um, it was something that I always worked on with a, an old coach of mine when I, from the age of 12 when I joined Leicester um, and he also trained the youth team at Leicester. So I was with him for like about seven years and his whole thing was about, we did a lot of heading, which you slightly heading. worries me for... Yeah, well, I, I, I guarantee I scored more headers for England than you did, Alan. Ooh. F 15, I think. Was it 15? Yeah, I think more than anyone. Right. Yeah, Interesting. I think so. I'm don't, I don't want to boast on that, but I am boasting. <laughs> I suppose it's easy to yeah. fucking fly when you've got Dumbo legs, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. Well played. <laughs> I, was like your, I was like Teddy Sheringham for you there. I was just knocking it across for you to pop it in the goal. Well, absolutely. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so, yeah, but I mean... He, he, you know that on you know, in in the second game, Mike, and I know that the main concern for you is is your fantasy. So he'll come good and 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 bang one or two in. But you know, I'd be. But again, it's it's a bit like we 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 spoke earlier. He'll keep getting in there, and the, he's you can see his absolute hunger and desire to score goals, and how gutted he is when he misses. I mean, he shows his emotions, yeah. doesn't he? Every single time. I think that's what we talk about and that's why I always ask you about strikers and their, their feelings about scoring and not scoring he's just an absolute killer in, in, in front of goal and when he misses you just know he's going to get another opportunity and I'm praying no disrespect Brentford he gets a hat-trick <laughs> against <laughs> Brentford just for fantasy football but he will he'll get the opportunities you know if you actually mm. look he's similar to Mo Salah in they score a lot of goals, but they do miss quite a few chances as well. But when you've got a team like Man City providing for you, you're always going to get them chances. Well, uh, you know, you score a lot of goals, you miss a lot of chances. That's it. That's the way it goes. The life of a striker. Yeah, with the odd exception like Alan Shearer and myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we, we, we spoke about Mo, Mo Salah. He, he came back for Liverpool yesterday. Brilliant. He came on because obviously um, uh, Diogo Jota got injured and he was immediately a threat. Uh, wasn't he? Terrific. And, um, and and Liverpool, you know, the only I think the only probably concern you'd have with Liverpool is is the amount of injuries, the number of injuries that they've got at present. Well, two more yesterday as well, wasn't it? Jota stretched it off. Jones went off as uh, as well. Um, yeah. And Nunez at half time. Nunez, yeah, off the half time as well. Um, I mean, that's I think that's Liverpool's strength is the options in in forward positions. Um, but yeah, they've got a, they've got a lot of injuries. But having said that, they still played really well yesterday. Um, they they're looking, you know, that belief that we're on about, and uh, uh, can they go? On? They they look as if they've they've got that belief, and and I know the news with uh, with Klopp and everyone saying, well, oh, they, they, they might just give a little bit extra to for 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 a send off from him, but. Yeah, they've they've got that they've got that belief that they can go and uh, that they can go and do it, and they're, they're playing some really good football, and they're looking yeah. impressive. They're banging in the goals, Micah. How good is 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 Mo Salah though? You know, you mentioned uh, uh, him just then. I, 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 he's just 
He comes back from AFCON. He's injured. He does his hamstring. Mm. He gets a goal and assist. He comes off the bench, he gets a goal and assist like it's nothing. <laughs> like players would dream to do that. Mm. He's just such a special player, yeah. you know. I mean, there was there was talks of maybe is it the right time to to flog him in in the summer? But I I just think he's so valuable to to Liverpool and whatever they want to do. I think you're only saying that because you used to be a chauffeur. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a top player, man. Yeah, I think a sign of 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 great players really is that they don't. You know, you could say the same about Kevin De Bruyne. They don't seem to need that much time to get back in the swing of things. Yeah. You know, Salah's been injured. De Bruyne was injured for a longer period, obviously. But, like, straight in and, bosh, here we go. It's like we've never been away. Yeah. It's, it's absolute madness, honestly. Oh, it's madness. Arsenal. Oh. Arsenal are plodding on. My, my tip for the title. Um, yeah. <laughs> His tip for the title now. It was quite a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> you never said a word. Well, you were giving me a lot of grief about it just before Christmas. But they're still in there. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, they're banging in the goals. That's 21 goals scored and only two conceding it in the Premier League this year in 2024. Yeah. Um, Saka... Back to his best, although I don't think he's ever been poor. Let's let's, let's make that absolutely clear. The same you can say, I think, for Erdegaard. Oh, he was brilliant. Who's you know he's not quite had the numbers that he had the previous season, but he's you know he he was brilliant again yesterday. Mm. Um, so many good players, so much good football, um, and they're very good at the back as well. You know who's been key for them though with important goals, Trossard. Yes, because you know. He probably doesn't get in everyone's starting eleven when everyone's fit, when Jesus is fit and Martinelli's playing well and Saka's playing the way he is now. But he just brings something different to that team with his runs in behind, Vims, coming to the uh, to the ball to link up and then in front of goal. He's he's very clinical, isn't he? I mean, when he was at Brighton, we all knew he was a good player, but he's he's really come to Arsenal and fit in straight away. I just think to have that from the bench has been outstanding for him. And when he starts as well, he's scoring. So it's brilliant. Have you ever seen the artwork Scream? Scream? Yeah. Trossard looks a bit like that. <laughs> Look it up. Google it. <laughs> lots, of, lots of people will know what I mean. Scream what? The movie or artwork? Google it now, Micah. There you go. It won't take you a second. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He'll thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, Jesus, Jesus has been out injured, hasn't he? And it, it's questionable now where and whether he'd, he'd, he'd get back in. And, and I... I I thought as well, you know, Havertz is, is contributing as well. So much for Arsenal leading the forward then, eh? Well, I mean, City managed without an out-and-out out centre forward for a while, didn't they? Yeah, they're having a good, they're on a good run. Arsenal, they, um, mm, yeah. they're scoring lots and lots of goals, and yeah. it's going to be really exciting, isn't it, with the three of them now? It's going, it's all going to tell when they play each other. I think Arsenal have got to go to the Etihad. Man City have got to go to Anfield. Mm. They're going to be the key games. You know, where your confidence going into them games. Man City also got the, the Manchester derby. Yeah. As well, where in a derby, anything can happen. I still back Man City to, to win it. I, I think we all thought Man City were going to go on one of those things where they just win did, every didn't. single game. And that was kind of a little boost for everybody else yesterday. Mm -hmm. that there's, there are signs that, that they are beatable or that right, they didn't lose, but you know what I mean. Yeah, agreed. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be exciting though, isn't it? It's good. I mean, by contrast, um, Arsenal um, gave Burnley a, a good thumping. Um, God, it's been a tough season for, for Vincent and his side, hasn't it? And their supporters. It must be... I mean, obviously, our, our executive producer, my <laughs> partner, Tony Pastor, he's, 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 he's constantly in a very, very depressed state of mind. Hey, wait, anyone team. checked on him? He's OK, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> Bless him. He's not had much to shout about this season, has he? Well, he keeps going to the games as well. He was up there again yesterday. And I said to I said to him the day before. I went, Are "You sure you want to go, Tony?" I said, "You're a bit sucker for punishment." He went, "I know, I know. We're going to lose four nil." Um, well, you were wrong, Tony. He lost five nil. <laughs> At what point does Vincent Company become? 
under pressure in terms of it. I mean, pff, you know, he took them up in spectacular style um, last season, but it's, it's, you know, they spent a few quid in the summer, but it's, you know, feel for him. It's, it's, it's really not worked. The difference between uh, Burnley and Luton, and it's as if, and, and I know you've got your philosophy of how you want to play, but Luton want to stay in the division, you know? Who they signed, how they play, the atmosphere they create, whereas you look at Burnley and it's, well, this is how we're going to play regardless of what happens and we ain't going to change. Do you know what I mean? Do you, do you understand what I mean? And it's like... Yeah, do you think Do you think perhaps Burnley are looking at it and Vincent's looking at it, it's more of a... I mean, this seems a bit mad, but um, more of a long-term project. They've signed young players, right? If we go down, we go down, but we'll come back up again. It, it, and, and we're looking at... We're not looking at next year or the year after that. We're looking in five years' time. I'm. I'm, I'm just... Really? I'm just posing a question and playing. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that's my opinion. Mm. I'm saying, do you think there's a possibility that this is actually no? It's a long-term project, and if we if we hit a few bumps along the way, so be it. I I, I think it's it's a good point, but I I don't think as a manager and as a club you can afford to take that risk because we all want a long term. We all have goals, don't we? Short, medium. And, and long-term goals. But when you're getting battered every single week, it's doing no good for your, your confidence whatsoever. Then I think that's the first time they've been booed off this season as yeah. well. So you, you don't want the place to become toxic to say, okay, we're, we're looking at a long-term plan. I still think company's a very good manager. I feel I agree with Alan in terms of, they may have been naive in certain situations and they haven't adapted to what the Premier League needs because you can still play the, the way you want to play, but just alter certain things. There's been so many times where Alan's come in and said, oh, he sent it in, the, in a group chat. They're trying to play out again from the back. You can play out, but at the right times. And because it's a young squad, we're sort of using that as an excuse as okay, in the future, they'll get better at that. But, you know, time waits for nobody. We want results now, and there's no guarantees now when you go down yeah. that you'll come straight back up. Uh, Alan, you've been pretty critical of Burnley from, from the outset um, this season in, in the way they've gone about things. Um, do, you think, do you think Vincent, perhaps because of all his success and stuff, has been perhaps overly stubborn at all? Well, probably yes, but... He's got his beliefs, and you you have to yep. you have to as a manager, you can't listen to the outside noise. You've got to say no. This is the way I'm going to play, and I'm going to stick to my principles. Um, but I mean, they have they have been so naive at times this season, and it has been a really difficult. I mean, I'm not a Burnley fan, but it's been a it's difficult watching them. I mean, yet even yesterday you, you look play at, for Blackburn, didn't you? <laughs> You look at some of you look at some of the goals that they've conceded, and I don't go along with the, the thing. Okay, well, we're planning for next year or two years because many more of those defeats might not be in a job anyway. Um, do you know what I'm, you, you can't mm. you can't you can't afford too many of of the, what happened yesterday. They're conceding too far too many goals. Um, they've never really given themselves a chance. There's, I, I haven't thought once this season that Burnley will get out of the bottom three. The, is, is anyone else? I mean, Mike, I thought before ball was kicked that they were going to stay up. But once, there's not, they've, I've not seen anything to su suggest really that they've got a really good chance of staying in the Premier League. I'm, I've never thought that. Has anyone else? Um, not since probably four, five, six games into the start of the season. Um, I, I kind of, I, I admire him in many ways for sticking to his principles. Yeah. Um, and I think he's he's handled things incredibly well, and he's always been remarkably composed, even after mm. the most difficult of defeats, um, particularly yesterday. Yesterday, I think, was the first time he admitted that we just weren't good enough. This is not acceptable um, sort of response. Um, so I suppose at the end, if if it's not going to work for you, at least you're going to go down your way, you know, playing your way, exactly your way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. So yeah. Speaking of playing in a certain way, I mean. Gary O'Neill for for you know what job he's done with Wolves and and what a good side they look 
um, you know, Neto's back flying. Um, the midfield two yesterday was highlighted by Danny Murphy on on, on match of the day were were, were exceptional. Gomez scoring um, both of their goals and what a win at Tottenham! What a job! What a performance! What a game! What a win! I mean, not many people other than Wolves fans and Gary himself and the team would have would have thought that had gone there and. and beating Spurs the way they, the way they did. I, um, what I saw, they were brilliant. He's doing a great job. Mm. I, I just think, you know, when you've got a, a manager who he speaks very, very well and he's clear in his plan and it doesn't always happen that as a manager, but everyone on all the players have bought into exactly what he's trying to do and he's playing attacking football and that's what I mean where we, we're talking about company and they're trying to play like an attacking style of football if you tweak certain bits it can work and we've got to give so much credit to him because I, I always thought Wolves would be okay because I think they've got good players anyway but to get them playing in this manner away at Spurs is a massive massive and all the games that they seem to be pl be playing they seem to be in the game or having chances to it's not like it's a one-off or every five games they, they, they pull out a big result. It's like consistency is what the key is for me when I'm watching them. They always look like they can do something in the game and it's just, it's great to watch, really is. They're only three points off what would be conceivably a European spot. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing. I mean, I, I didn't... Uh... I didn't see Wolves doing as well as they're doing. I thought they'd be all right, but I didn't see them being in the position that they're in. So that's great credit to him and to his players for uh, for playing the way they are. Amazing. We'll drift further afar um, before we go, as, as as we like to do on a, as when we do our episodes on Sunday evening. Um, I don't know whether you've been keeping an eye on on things up north, uh, north of the border in in Scotland. Um, where Celtic had quite a good lead, um, I think seven-point lead in September, um, but now Rangers with Celtic dropping um, points yesterday um, with a draw, and um, Rangers won three nil uh, away at St Johnston. They're, they're now top. It's going to be quite tight that, and quite exciting <laughs> in Scotland going into the. Um, not that they, not that they, Ooh, not, pressure. not that they care that much about Celtic and Rangers up there. <laughs> I actually watched that game. Which game did you watch? At St Johnson Rangers. Chris, Chris Sutton was doing. I watched it today as well. Yeah, same. Yeah, it was actually quite a good game. Actually, uh, Matt Campbell's a player, you know. I know he was at Norwich and he's played at different various teams, but he's, he's got something, especially for that league. He's just. A, a, a real star, um, and the goals were good. Tavernier, by the way, the mm. right back. Yeah, the goals. He scored over a hundred goals. I know he takes free kicks and penalties, but he scored over a hundred goals from right back. It's absolutely ridiculous. Who do you want to win, Rangers or Celtic? Oh <laughs> no, no, no! I don't want to get abused on social media. <laughs> wow. He's setting us oh up there. He's setting us right up there, isn't he, Who do you want to win, guys? Who do I want to win? I want the best team to win. Right. My best team fifth. win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, crikey. Um, Leverkusen won on Saturday, and then on Sunday, um, Bayern lost against um, Bochum. 3-2. Um, they were... Th I think they were... They, they went behind. Um, they were two one behind, and then um, Upa Makano got a second yellow. Then they went three one down, and Harry Kane pulled one back. So obviously it's not his fault. <laughs> but um, eight points behind now. Mother I mean, man. it's looking um, extremely unlikely that they they'll win the league. I would say, particularly as Leverkusen have still. I think that meant they equaled Bayern Munich's all time unbeaten record run at the start of a season whatever you want to, however you want to describe it um but um wow yeah Leverkusen's still unbeaten and and all that's left probably realistically you would think now because eight points is a hell of a lead is is the Champions League and that's they're trailing against Lazio I suspect they might get through in that one but they don't look like they've got enough um Thomas Tuchel um he must be under severe pressure because they don't usually um they don't piss about, shall we say, at Bayern Munich. Yeah, he's under huge pressure. He'll know that. He'll know that 
those running results not acceptable uh, for a club that size for who they've got I mean they've brought in one of the best forwards in the world although albeit he's still scoring goals for fun um, well, I know he didn't in the last couple of games and he'd certainly he didn't again didn't have a kick against Leverkusen did he uh, but no he's he's under massive pressure there without a doubt Yeah, I wonder when the last time Bayern Munich lost three games in a week Ooh. Be going back a bit, I would imagine. Mm. I thought you were going to. I thought you were going to chuck the status then. I thought you had it. You'd done your homework. I just. I. I, I wish I had, but I've only just thought about it. <laughs> so, um, but I, but hopefully by the end of this podcast, I can give you the answer. <laughs> Harry. Harry. <laughs> 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 yeah, but um, I, th- I think what this does, it throws up a conversation, doesn't it? If, if say, um, Tuchel lost his job now, then obviously there would be an opening at, 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 at Bayern Munich and who would they go for that? Now, I very much... The, the normal Bayern Munich way is like take away the opposing the best opposing manager and, and employment but I, I suspect that Xabi Alonso wouldn't leave now with an eight point lead and unbeaten all season um, so um, it's you have to wonder what might what might happen there and the ramifications further down the line whether they'll try and poach Xabi Alonso in the summer in, in, and then he wouldn't go to Liverpool because obviously he was a Bayern Munich player um, Real Madrid might want him. Um, so the, the old managerial roundabout. It, it, it goes. Oh. Well, that's that was going to be my next point. I would be very surprised if. Um, well, he wouldn't go now, obviously. But even at the end of the season, having said that he's run out of energy and he needs a rest to then take another job, I I I think he's. I think I think he's got probably a bit more integrity than, than that. I, I I believed him when he said. He was running out of steam. Yeah, but does does he mean out of steam in in the Premier League? I mean, the Bundesliga probably a little bit more straightforward, if if I can say that. Obviously, this year has been a little bit different with Leverkusen, but usually they're favourites to win the the league every year. Maybe he's just thinking Champions League. Is that the I, I tend to agree with you guys, but I mean, we're going to speculate. We have to speculate, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> I mean, so far, he's so German. Far. Bayern Munich could come available. You know, if Alonso goes to Liverpool, then maybe not straight away, but when he comes back. I sense he'll take a year out, Jurgen Klopp. I, d- I might be wrong. Or he might take an international job, which is not quite as, as demanding. Um, right, I've got a really interesting stat here for you. Uh, in May 2015, um, Bayern Munich lost three consecutive games in a week. There you go. In when? So it's um, nine years ago. Nine years Almost ago. nine years ago. Yeah, wow. They lost to uh, Leverkusen, funnily enough, uh, Barcelona and Augsburg. So wow. there you go. Thank well you, Well done, Harry. Harry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Uh, anyone, anyone got a moment of the week? Ooh. Moment of the week. Alan Shearer's appearance on Match of the Day 2 in the Rezies. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, you're trying to... <laughs> uh, I'm you, to you. Don't say oh. that. He's starting up some... <laughs> what? Well, go on. Hit, 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 hit us with some moment of the week. What we got? I don't know. I'll tell you what. Fuck moment of the week. <laughs> 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 we haven't got one. Oh dear. Um, our podcast is moment of the week, and um, uh, can I can I thank you um, everyone for your continued um, love for the. I mean, I don't know about you boys, but I get stopped lots Brilliant, of times, isn't it? It's amazing. And, and sometimes I've, I'm walking by people; they've got their, their their pods in or their headphones, and they. I'm listening to your podcast. I'm listening. I love it. I love it. And it yeah. I mean, it, I, it, it makes us feel good. Yeah. I mean, it really does. Actually, genuinely, it's um, it's it's uplifting and heartwarming. So. Um, so thank you for all the kind words and uh, please keep listening. Are, are you glad we did it in the end, guys? Are you glad we well, started? I'm, I'm definitely, I, I, I love doing it. I, I just, it's talking football. It's talking the thing that, that, that we love. The um, responses are amazing. You're right. It's the same wherever you go, wherever you, it, it, anywhere. People are like, I love your podcast. So yeah, it's a great feeling. So again, thanks everyone. Well, the only problem is I have to 
speak and listen to you boring bastards. <laughs> and there is Mike at the moment of the week. <laughs> I, 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 I think I think the moment of the week was your night out in Vegas. <laughs> How about that? I still haven't seen you in person to tell me what really happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Funny enough, my glasses have started steaming up again. That, that's, <laughs> they always happen. Okay, um, well, thank you um, very much, Micah and Alan, and um, all of you for listening. Um, that's it um, for this week. Um, goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Have a good week. 